Creatures and Monsters of Central and South American Folklore Watch this video up to the end because over 20 creatures are fully explained. Central and South America, with its rich tapestry of cultures and traditions, is home to a myriad of mythical creatures and monsters. These entities, born from the depths of folklore, have intrigued and terrified people for generations. From tales whispered around campfires to cautionary stories passed down from parents to children, these creatures are an integral part of the cultural heritage of the region. In this video, we delve into the folklore of Central and South America to uncover the stories behind some of its most intriguing creatures and monsters, examining their origins, characteristics and cultural significance. Background on Central and South American Folklore Central and South American Folklore is a complex tapestry woven from the beliefs, traditions and experiences of the region's diverse indigenous peoples. From the ancient civilizations of the Maya, Aztec and Inca to the indigenous communities that inhabit the region today, folklore has played a central role in shaping cultural identity and worldview. These myths and legends often serve as a means of explaining natural phenomena, teaching moral lessons, or instilling a sense of cultural pride and belonging. Creature number one, Chupacabra. Chupacabra, in Latin American popular legend, a monstrous creature that attacks animals and consumes their blood. The name is derived from the Spanish words chupa, to suck, and cabra, goat, and can be translated as goat sucker. As a fearsome but probably non-existent creature, the chupacabra has been characterized as the southern equivalent of the Sasquatch. The chupacabra only recently joined the vampire in the bestiary of blood-sucking creatures. Chupacabras were first reported in 1995 in Puerto Rico, where they were blamed for attacks on goats, sheep, and other domestic animals, supposedly leaving uneaten carcasses that were drained of blood. Early reports described a creature that stood upright and resembled a large reptilian kangaroo with huge red eyes. No actual specimens were found, and skeptics suggested that witnesses may have been influenced by the Hollywood science fiction horror film Spices, 1995 which features a monster of similar appearance. But other sightings were reported throughout the Americas and as far north as the United States. La Llorona La Llorona, Spanish, the weeping woman, a mythological woman in Mexican and Latin American oral tradition whose siren-like wails are said to lure adults and children to their untimely deaths. The legend of La Llorona is a popular ghost story that is especially prominent on Dia de los Muertos and in Chicano and Latin American communities. According to the legend, La Llorona was once a beautiful woman named Maria. In many variations of the tale, Maria's husband was an unfaithful or abusive man who treated their two sons more affectionately than he did his wife. Other retellings say that her husband may have left her for a wealthier or lighter-skinned woman, out of jealousy, rage, or despair, she is said to have lured her sons to a nearby river and drowned them before drowning herself after realizing what she had done. In another version, Maria's neglected sons drowned accidentally while she was cavorting with gentleman collars. Forever after, Maria's ghost, now La Llorona, is forced to wander the earth searching for her lost sons. She can be identified by her loud wailing cries. Mis hijos, mis hijos, donde están mis hijos? My sons, my sons, where are my sons? Many versions of the story are told to children across Latin America, often to dissuade them from staying out too late at night. Some versions claim that La Llorona can be summoned in a seance-like environment, Others claim that she appears when children misbehave or when men find themselves lost and alone near a lake or river. 
In some versions, she appears to mothers and steals their children, mistaking the children for her own lost sons. There are many stories of encounters with La Llorona. In 1968, American folklorist Bess Lomax Hawes published an article, La Llorona in Juvenile Hall, which gives accounts of a weeping woman haunting a juvenile detention facility in California. Some accounts describe La Llorona as having long hair and wearing a hooded cape or a veil. Others describe her as being young and pretty, being dressed entirely in black or white, or having the bones of her dead children embedded in her backbone. In all iterations of the story, encountering La Llorona is to be avoided at all costs. It is said that those who hear La Llorona's cries are destined for misfortune or even death. A desperate and malevolent spirit, she is said to act unflinchingly and without mercy, often drowning the children she has found or kidnapped when she realizes they are not her sons. Some traditions hold that she will begin to seduce a lone man and then murder him as a form of revenge for her husband's abuse or adultery, while others assert that she kills men, women and children indiscriminately. Eerily, her wails are often said to sound more distant the closer she is to her victims. The legend has several different origin stories. According to one account, her tale originated in Mexico. Another argues that it traveled through oral tradition from Spain. Some historians identify La Llorona as directly linked to the Aztec earth goddess Coatlicu. Another tradition holds that she is Malintzin or La Malinche, the enslaved indigenous woman who was the primary interpreter and concubine of Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés. This version was told in Rudolfo Anaya's novel The Legend of La Llorona, 1984. Aside from these speculations, La Llorona endures as a myth that continues to strike fear in children of Latin American heritage. The coco or coca, also known as the cucuy, cuco, cucuy, or El Cucuy, is a mythical ghost-like monster equivalent to the bogeyman found in Spain and Portugal. Those beliefs have also spread in many Hispanophone and Lusophone countries. It can also be considered an Iberian version of a bugbear, as it is a commonly used figure of speech representing an irrational or exaggerated fear. The Cucuy is a male being, while Cuca is a female version of the mythical monster. The monster will come to the house of disobedient children at night and take them away. When it comes to urban legends that can scare people out of their wits, it is hard to find one better than the legend of El Cucuy, the Mexican version of the enduring boogeyman legend. While some might dismiss it as yet another device that parents in Spanish-speaking countries would use to keep their children in line, the story of El Cucuy and its meaning, purely by virtue of its enduring nature and its consistent resurfacing in popular culture, seems to be much more than that. According to legend, El Cucuy is the boogeyman monster found in Mexico. He is described as a frightening creature, small, misshapen and hairy all over. Among the other distinctive physical characteristics, El Cucuy is said to have large bat-like ears, red eyes that glow in the dark, and a set of large razor-sharp teeth that can remind you of the barracuda fish. The urban legend states that El Cucuy attacks and abducts children who do not display exemplary behavior. He can, reportedly, hide under the beds or inside the closets of children for long periods of time, emerge suddenly when they are asleep in the dead of night, and take them away. Parents in Mexico would often chastise and discipline their children with the threat of El Cucuy if they do not behave. For many years, this is how the legend has passed from one generation to the next and stayed alive. The legend also says that El Cucuy has the power to shapeshift and take on the appearance of a faceless shadow, dark and dangerous. It is this guise that he would use to enter the rooms of children undetected. He would then proceed to watch them in silence for a long time, waiting for the opportune moment. When that moment would arrive, he would strike,
carrying the child off with him to his lair, situated deep in the mountains. There, he would proceed to slowly eat the child. While the El Cucuy story originated in Europe, it can be safely assumed that it came to Latin America during the period of European colonization. Once the story reached its new home, it mingled with the local culture and became a different version of the original legend, and the El Cucuy meaning and stories took different forms. Apart from Mexico, versions of this urban legend are also rife in other countries like Venezuela, Guatemala, Peru, Chile, Uruguay, Puerto Rico, Honduras, El Salvador, and the Dominican Republic. While the essence of the legend is in lore and word-of-mouth generational travel, it has also been represented and celebrated in popular culture in more ways than one. The legend is mentioned in the works of de Cervantes and also seems to be the inspiration behind Goya's terrifying Que viene el coco. His habit of capturing and devouring children also creates an interesting parallel with Pennywise the Clown from Stephen King's It. King also uses a version of the El Cucuy story as inspiration for his novel The Outsider. El Sombrerón El Sombrerón is a mythical figure deeply rooted in Guatemalan folklore. This enigmatic character has captured the imagination of generations permeating various aspects of culture and society in Guatemala. With his distinctive appearance and mischievous behavior, El Sombrerón has become an integral part of the nation's storytelling tradition. In this comprehensive exploration, we delve into the origins, characteristics, and cultural significancy of El Sombrerón. We will analyze the psychological and socio-cultural aspects of this legendary figure, examining his role in shaping beliefs and behaviors within Guatemalan society. Furthermore, we will investigate the portrayal of El Sombrerón in art, literature and media, highlighting his enduring presence in popular culture, origins and evolution of El Sombrerón. The origins of El Sombrerón can be traced back to pre-Columbian times when indigenous communities inhabited the region now known as Guatemala. These ancient cultures possessed a rich tapestry of myths and legends, often revolving around supernatural beings and deities. While specific details may vary among different indigenous groups, elements of these ancient beliefs have influenced the development of El Sombrerón, one theory suggests that El Sombrerón emerged as a blend of indigenous folklore and Spanish colonial influences. During the Spanish conquest of Guatemala in the 16th century, European settlers brought their own traditions and superstitions, which intermingled with the existing indigenous beliefs. This cultural exchange gave rise to new mythical figures, including El Sombrerón, who embodied a fusion of indigenous and colonial elements. Over time, the legend of El Sombrerón evolved through oral tradition, with storytellers adding their own embellishments and variations to the tale. As the legend spread across different regions of Guatemala, it underwent further modifications, reflecting the unique cultural characteristics of each community. Despite these variations, certain core elements of the story remained consistent, ensuring the continuity of El Sombrerón's narrative throughout the centuries. The appearance and characteristics of El Sombrerón El Sombrerón is typically described as a mysterious figure with distinctive physical attributes and behaviors. His appearance is characterized by several notable features that set him apart from ordinary humans. Central to his identity is the large black hat, or sombrero, that he wears atop his head. This hat, which gives him his name, is often depicted as an old-fashioned, wide-brimmed hat adorned with feathers or other decorative embellishments. In addition to his sombrero, El Sombrerón is said to have long black hair that falls in ringlets around his shoulders. His attire is described as old-fashioned and elegant, 
reminiscent of colonial era clothing. He is often depicted wearing a cape or cloak, adding to his mysterious and otherworldly appearance. One of the most striking characteristics of El Sombrerón is his behavior towards young women, particularly those with long hair. According to legend, El Sombrerón is infatuated with the beauty of young women and seeks to capture their attention through unconventional means. He is known to frequent areas where young women gather, such as public squares or parks, where he can observe them from a distance. To attract the attention of his chosen victim, El Sombrerón employs various tactics, including serenading them with his guitar or playing haunting melodies on his violin. He is also skilled in the art of braiding, using his nimble fingers to weave intricate patterns into the hair of unsuspecting maidens. These braids are said to be so tightly woven that they cannot be undone by ordinary means, symbolizing El Sombrerón's supernatural abilities. Despite his romantic intentions, El Sombrerón is often portrayed as a tragic figure, condemned to eternal loneliness due to his inability to win the affections of the women he desires. His nocturnal wanderings and melancholic serenades evoke a sense of sympathy among those who encounter him, adding depth to his character and eliciting feelings of both fear and pity. El Sombrerón in Guatemalan Culture and Society El Sombrerón occupies a prominent place in Guatemalan culture, where he is revered as both a symbol of folklore and a cautionary tale. His presence is felt in various aspects of society, from traditional celebrations to everyday conversations. Despite the passage of time, the legend of El Sombrerón continues to captivate the imagination of Guatemalans young and old, reinforcing its status as a cultural touchstone. One of the ways in which El Sombrerón is celebrated is through traditional festivals and holidays. In certain regions of Guatemala, particularly in rural areas, festivities are held to honor El Sombrerón and other mythical beings. These celebrations often involve music, dance and storytelling, with local communities coming together to pay homage to their cultural heritage. In addition to festivals, El Sombrerón is frequently invoked in popular sayings and expressions used in everyday speech. His name is synonymous with mischief and trickery, and references to El Sombrerón are often made to warn against engaging in reckless or foolish behavior. By invoking his name, Guatemalans seek to instill a sense of caution and prudence in their interactions with others, thereby preserving the moral lessons embedded within the legend. Furthermore, El Sombrerón serves as a source of inspiration for artists, writers and musicians seeking to explore themes of love, longing and the supernatural. His tragic tale has been immortalized in countless works of art, literature and music, each offering a unique interpretation of his character and motivations. Whether depicted as a romantic hero or a malevolent spirit, El Sombrerón continues to inspire creativity and imagination among creators and audiences alike. Psychological and Sociocultural Analysis of El Sombrerón The legend of El Sombrerón provides valuable insights into the psychological and sociocultural dynamics of Guatemalan society. At its core, the story of El Sombrerón reflects timeless themes of love, desire and the pursuit of happiness, resonating with audiences on a deeply emotional level. By examining the legend through a psychological and socio-cultural lens, we can gain a better understanding of its enduring appeal and significance. From a psychological perspective, El Sombrerón can be interpreted as a symbol of unrequited love and unfulfilled desires. His relentless pursuit of young women reflects a deep-seated longing for companionship and intimacy, driven by feelings of loneliness and isolation. Despite his best efforts, El Sombrerón is ultimately doomed to failure, unable to bridge the gap between himself and the objects of his affection. 
This theme of unrequited love resonates with audiences who have experienced similar feelings of longing and rejection in their own lives. By identifying with El Sombreron, individuals may find solace in the shared experience of heartache and disappointment, recognizing the universal nature of human emotions. In this way, the legend of El Sombreron serves as a poignant reminder of the complexities of love and the inherent vulnerability of the human heart. From a socio-cultural perspective, El Sombreron can be seen as a reflection of gender dynamics and power imbalances within Guatemalan society. His pursuit of young women, coupled with his ability to exert control over their lives through his supernatural powers, highlights the unequal distribution of power between men and women. In this patriarchal framework, women are portrayed as passive objects of desire, subject to the whims of male authority figures such as El Sombreron. Furthermore, the legend of El Sombreron sheds light on the cultural significance of hair as a symbol of femininity and beauty. The act of braiding, which plays a central role in the legend, serves as a metaphor for the control and ownership of women's bodies by male figures such as El Sombreron. By weaving intricate patterns into their hair, El Sombreron asserts his dominance over his chosen victims, reducing them to mere objects of his desire. However, it is important to note that the legend of El Sombreron is not static or monolithic, but rather subject to reinterpretation and subversion by different social groups. In recent years, there has been a growing awareness of the harmful gender stereotypes perpetuated by the legend, prompting efforts to reclaim and reframe the narrative from a more feminist perspective. By challenging traditional gender roles and power dynamics, these reinterpretations seek to empower women and promote a greater equality and social justice within Guatemalan society, the impact of El Sombreron on art, literature, and media. The legend of El Sombreron has left an indelible mark on Guatemalan art, literature, and media, inspiring countless works that explore its themes and motifs in creative ways. From paintings and sculptures to novels and films, El Sombreron's influence can be seen across a wide range of cultural productions each offering a unique interpretation of the legend and its significance. In visual arts, El Sombreron is often depicted in romanticized portrayals that emphasize his mysterious and alluring qualities. Paintings and illustrations featuring El Sombreron frequently evoke a sense of nostalgia for a bygone era, with lush landscapes and elaborate costumes adding to the romantic atmosphere. Artists such as Carlos Merida and Efrain Resinos have captured the essence of El Sombreron in their work, imbuing the legend with a sense of magic and wonder. In literature, El Sombreron has been the subject of numerous poems, short stories, and novels that explore his character and motivations in greater depth. Writers such as Miguel Angel Asturias and Rafael Arevalo Martinez have incorporated elements of the legend into their literary works using El Sombreron as a symbol of the supernatural and the uncanny. These literary interpretations offer new insights into the legend, shedding light on its psychological and philosophical dimensions. In media, El Sombreron has been adapted into various forms of entertainment, including radio dramas, television shows, and films. One of the most notable adaptations is the 1950 film El Sombreron, directed by Julio Alejandro and starring Arturo de Cordova and Rosita Quintana. This classic Mexican film brings the legend of El Sombreron to life on the silver screen, captivating audiences with its dramatic storyline and haunting imagery. El Tunchi. El Tunchi is a mythical being deeply ingrained in the folklore of the Amazonian people. Its origins are shrouded in the mists of time, blending elements of indigenous beliefs with the influences of colonialism and modernity. In this comprehensive exploration, we delve into the intricate tapestry of El Tunchi's legend, 
unraveling its symbolism, cultural significance, and the ways in which it continues to resonate in the contemporary world. The Origins of El Tunchi To understand El Tunchi, we must first examine its origins within the rich tapestry of Amazonian mythology. The term Tunchi is derived from the Quechua language, spoken by indigenous peoples across the Andean region of South America. In Quechua, Tunchi refers to the restless spirits of the deceased, believed to wander the earth seeking retribution or resolution for their unfinished business in life. This concept of wandering spirits is common in many indigenous cultures, reflecting a deep reverence for the spiritual realm and the interconnectedness of all living beings. The specific incarnation of El Tunchi as a spectral entity haunting the depths of the rainforest emerges from the cultural amalgamation that occurred during the Spanish colonization of the Amazon. As European explorers penetrated deeper into the jungle, they encountered indigenous tribes with their own complex belief systems and mythologies. The mingling of these diverse traditions gave rise to new legends and creatures, blending indigenous cosmology with elements of Catholicism and European folklore. El Tunchi, in its contemporary form, embodies the fears and anxieties of the Amazonian people, reflecting their deep-rooted connection to the natural world and the supernatural forces that govern it. As such, its legend has evolved over time, adapting to changing cultural landscapes while retaining its core essence as a harbinger of doom and guardian of the rainforest. The Appearance and Characteristics of El Tunchi Describing the appearance of El Tunchi is a challenging task, as its depiction varies widely depending on regional variations and individual interpretations. However, certain common traits and characteristics can be identified across different accounts and folklore traditions. In many tales, El Tunchi is described as a tall, shadowy figure with glowing eyes and elongated limbs, reminiscent of a ghost or spirit. Its form is often nebulous and indistinct, blending seamlessly with the dense foliage of the rainforest and appearing and disappearing at will. Some accounts portray El Tunchi as a shapeshifter, capable of assuming various forms to deceive and ensnare its victims. One of the most distinctive features of El Tunchi is its eerie, mournful cry, which echoes through the jungle on still nights, striking fear into the hearts of those who hear it. This unearthly wail is said to be the voice of the restless spirit trapped within El Tunchi, lamenting its fate and warning others of impending danger. Despite its spectral nature, El Tunchi is often depicted as possessing a malevolent intelligence capable of plotting and scheming to lure unsuspecting travelers to their doom. It is said to inhabit remote areas of the rainforest particularly those associated with tragedy or violence, such as abandoned villages, ancient burial grounds, and treacherous river crossings. The Role of El Tunchi in Amazonian Culture Within Amazonian culture, El Tunchi occupies a unique and multifaceted role, serving as both a cautionary tale and a symbol of the supernatural forces that govern the natural world. Its legend is deeply intertwined with indigenous cosmology, reflecting the complex relationship between humans and the environment in which they dwell. One of the central themes of El Tunchi folklore is the idea of balance and reciprocity between humans and nature. In many tales, El Tunchi is portrayed as a guardian of the rainforest, punishing those who disrespect or exploit its resources for personal gain. This aspect of the legend serves as a warning against environmental destruction and the consequences of disrupting the delicate equilibrium of the natural world. At the same time, El Tunchi embodies the fears and anxieties of the Amazonian people, reflecting their deep-seated beliefs in the existence of malevolent spirits and supernatural forces. Its legend serves as a reminder of the dangers lurking in the uncharted depths of the rainforest urging caution and vigilance to avoid falling prey to its sinister machinations. In addition to its role as a guardian and avenger, 
El Tunchi also holds a place in Amazonian spiritual practices and rituals. Shamans and healers may invoke its name as a protective charm or as a means of communicating with the spirit world. Offerings and prayers are often made to appease El Tunchi and ensure safe passage through its domain, particularly during journeys into remote areas of the rainforest. The Cultural Legacy of El Tunchi Despite the encroachment of modernity and the erosion of traditional beliefs, El Tunchi continues to exert a powerful influence on the collective imagination of the Amazonian people. Its legend has endured for centuries, passing down through oral tradition and folk tales from generation to generation. In recent years, the figure of El Tunchi has experienced a resurgence of interest and attention, fueled in part by the growing awareness of environmental issues and the need to preserve the Amazon rainforest. As deforestation and industrial development threaten to encroach upon its pristine wilderness, the legend of El Tunchi serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of protecting and respecting the natural world. Moreover, El Tunchi has become a symbol of resistance and resilience for indigenous communities fighting to preserve their way of life in the face of external pressures. Its legend embodies the spirit of defiance and defiance against cultural assimilation and environmental degradation, inspiring a sense of pride and solidarity among those who call the rainforest home. In popular culture, El Tonchi has also made appearances in literature, film and music, further cementing its status as an iconic figure of Amazonian folklore. Writers and artists draw upon its imagery and symbolism to explore themes of identity, spirituality and the clash between tradition and modernity in the contemporary world. La Siguanaba La Siguanaba is a fascinating and enigmatic figure deeply rooted in Central American folklore, particularly in the cultural heritage of El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua and parts of Mexico. Her story is woven into the fabric of indigenous beliefs, Spanish colonial influences and the rich tapestry of oral tradition passed down through generations. In this exploration, we'll delve into the origins, characteristics, cultural significance and various interpretations of La Siguanaba. We'll journey through her mythological narrative, examining the motifs, symbols and themes that define her legend. Additionally, we'll analyze the psychological and socio-cultural dimensions of La Siguanaba, considering her role as a cultural archetype and the ways in which she reflects the fears, desires and aspirations of the societies that have embraced her tale. Origins and Etymology The name La Siguanaba is derived from the Nahuatl word Tihuateteo, which refers to supernatural female beings. However, the specific origins of La Siguanaba's legend are intertwined with the cultural amalgamation that occurred during the Spanish conquest of Central America. Indigenous beliefs merged with European folklore, resulting in a syncretic mythology that gave risi to figures like La Siguanaba. Mythological Narrative The legend of La Siguanaba typically centers around a beautiful woman cursed by the gods or spirits due to her vanity, infidelity, or some other transgression. As punishment, she is condemned to wander the rivers, streams, and forests of Central America, appearing as a seductive temptress to unsuspecting men. La Siguanaba is often described as having long, flowing hair that conceals her face, allowing her to maintain her alluring appearance while concealing her true identity. Some versions of the legend depict her as a shapeshifter, capable of assuming different forms to entice her victims. One of the most prominent aspects of La Siguanaba's myth is her association with bodies of water, particularly rivers and lakes. It is said that she lures men to these watery domains where they meet a tragic fate. 
Some accounts describe her as a vengeful spirit who drowns her victims, while authors suggest that she drives men to madness or leads them astray in the wilderness. Cultural Significancy La Ciguanaba holds a significant place in the cultural consciousness of Central America, where her legend is passed down through generations via oral tradition. She serves as a cautionary tale, warning against the dangers of lust, infidelity, and the allure of the unknown. Moreover, La Ciguanaba's story reflects deeper cultural anxieties and social dynamics. Her portrayal as a seductive yet malevolent figure speaks to the fears and uncertainties surrounding female sexuality in traditional patriarchal societies. Additionally, her association with natural elements like water underscores the reverence and sometimes fear with which indigenous peoples regarded the natural world. Interpretations and Variations as with many folklore figures, La Ciguanaba's legend has evolved over time, giving rise to various interpretations and regional variations. In some versions of the story, she is depicted as a sympathetic figure, cursed unjustly and condemned to wander for eternity. Other renditions paint her as a more sinister entity, preying upon unsuspecting men for her own amusement or revenge. Furthermore, La Ciguanaba's legend has been adapted and reimagined in literature, art, and popular culture. Writers, artists, and filmmakers have drawn inspiration from her story, incorporating elements of mystery, romance, and horror to create compelling narratives that resonate with contemporary audiences. Psychological and Sociocultural Analysis From a psychological perspective, La Ciguanaba can be seen as a manifestation of deep-seated fears and desires within the collective psyche of Central American societies. Her dual nature as both seductress and harbinger of doom reflects the complex interplay between attraction and repulsion, desire and fear. Moreover, La Ciguanaba's role as a cultural archetype speaks to broader socio-cultural dynamics including gender relations, power dynamics, and the legacy of colonialism. Her portrayal as a woman who defies societal norms and challenges male authority underscores the tensions surrounding gender roles and expectations in traditional societies. La Mano Peluda La Mano Peluda, translated as the hairy hand, is a prominent mythical creature in Mexican folklore. With its roots deeply embedded in pre-Columbian beliefs and indigenous traditions, this enigmatic entity has captivated the imaginations of generations. Often depicted as a disembodied hairy hand, it embodies fears and superstitions prevalent in Mexican culture. This study aims to explore the origins, cultural significance, and various interpretations of La Mano Peluda, shedding light on its enduring legacy importance of folklore in Mexican culture. Folklore plays a vital role in Mexican culture, serving as a repository of collective wisdom, beliefs, and values. Passed down through generations via oral tradition, folklore encompasses myths, legends, folk tales, and superstitions. These narratives not only entertain, but also serve as a means of cultural preservation, providing insights into the worldview and identity of a society. La Mano Peluda, with its deep roots in Mexican folklore, serves as a compelling example of the cultural significance of such mythical creatures. Purpose of the study This study seeks to delve into the multifaceted nature of La Mano Peluda, examining its origins, characteristics, cultural significance, and contemporary manifestations. By drawing from various disciplines such as anthropology, sociology, literature, and folklore studies, we aim to provide a comprehensive analysis of this intriguing creature. Through this exploration, we hope to gain a deeper understanding of its role in Mexican culture and its enduring appeal. Chapter 1 Origins of Lamano Peluda The origins of Lamano Peluda 
can be traced back to pre-Columbian beliefs and traditions prevalent in Mesoamerica. In indigenous cultures such as the Aztec, Maya, and Zapotec, there existed a rich tapestry of mythological beings and supernatural entities. These cultures had a profound reverence for nature and the spiritual world, believing in the existence of gods, spirits, and otherworldly creatures. Among the Aztecs, for example, the god Tezcatlipoca was often depicted with a severed, skeletal hand, symbolizing his power and authority. This imagery of a disembodied hand may have served as a precursor to the concept of La Mano Peluda in later Mexican folklore. Similarly, the Maya had beliefs in spectral beings known as Aluxes, which were thought to inhabit natural features such as forests, caves and rivers. These mischievous entities were said to possess supernatural powers and could manifest in various forms, including that of a hairy hand. Influence of indigenous cultures With the Spanish conquest of Mexico in the 16th century, indigenous beliefs and traditions underwent a process of syncretism, blending with Catholicism brought by the conquistadors. This syncretic fusion gave rise to a unique cultural landscape where indigenous cosmology intertwined with Catholic theology, resulting in a rich tapestry of myths, legends and folk beliefs. The figure of La Mano Peluda likely emerged during this period of cultural exchange, drawing upon indigenous concepts of the supernatural and melding them with Christian symbolism. The disembodied hand, a common motif in European folklore and religious iconography, became fused with indigenous beliefs surrounding spirits and spectral entities. Over time, this amalgamation gave rise to the distinct folklore surrounding La Mano Peluda, which continues to endure to this day. Confluence of Spanish and Indigenous Folklore The melding of Spanish and Indigenous folklore in colonial Mexico led to the emergence of new mythical creatures and legends, including La Mano Peluda. As Spanish missionaries sought to convert indigenous populations to Catholicism, they incorporated elements of indigenous spirituality into Christian narratives, creating a hybrid belief system that reflected the cultural syncretism of the time. The concept of the disembodied hand as a harbinger of misfortune or supernatural intervention likely resonated with both Spanish and indigenous audiences contributing to the widespread acceptance of La Mano Peluda as a cultural archetype. Whether viewed as a malevolent spirit, a warning of impending danger, or a manifestation of divine punishment, La Mano Peluda embodied the fears and anxieties of Mexican society, serving as a potent symbol in the collective imagination. Chapter 2 The Evolution of La Mano Peluda the earliest references to La Mano Peluda can be found in oral tradition, where it was often recounted in the form of folk tales, legends, and cautionary tales. Storytellers known as Nahuales, or shamans, would regale audiences with tales of supernatural encounters, weaving intricate narratives that blurred the boundaries between the mundane and the supernatural. In these oral accounts, La Mano Peluda was depicted as a spectral entity that would manifest in teams of crisis or as a punishment for wrongdoing. It was said to lurk in the shadows, waiting to strike unsuspecting victims with its hiery appendage. These stories served not only as entertainment, but also as a means of transmitting cultural values and reinforcing social norms within communities adaptations in written literature. With the advent of printing press in colonial Mexico, folklore and oral traditions began to be recorded in written form, allowing for greater dissemination and preservation of cultural narratives. Early accounts of La Mano Peluda can be found in colonial era manuscripts, where it was often depicted as a malevolent spirit that would haunt those who dared to trespass into forbidden territories or commit acts of moral transgression. As literacy rates increased and printing technology advanced, 
written literature became an increasingly important medium for the transmission of folklore. Authors such as Juan de Grijalva and Fernando de Alva Ixtlilxochitl included references to La Mano Peluda in their writings, further cementing its place in Mexican literary tradition. These written accounts served to popularize the creature and solidify its status as a cultural icon. Visual representations in art. In addition to oral and written traditions, La Mano Peluda also found expression in visual art, including paintings, illustrations, and sculptures. Artists drew inspiration from both indigenous and European sources, creating depictions of the creature that ranged from the grotesque to the sublime. In colonial era art, La Mano Peluda was often portrayed as a monstrous hand emerging from the darkness, its hairy appendages reaching out to ensnare unsuspecting victims. These images served to evoke a sense of terror and awe, reflecting the anxieties of a society grappling with the uncertainties of the colonial frontier. In modern times, La Mano Peluda continues to inspire artists across various mediums, from traditional folk art to contemporary digital media. Its iconic imagery has been appropriated and reinterpreted by generations of artists, each adding their own unique twist to the mythos of the creature. Whether depicted as a symbol of cultural pride or a harbinger of supernatural terror, La Mano Peluda remains a potent symbol in the visual landscape of Mexican culture. Chapter 3. Characteristics and Appearance Descriptions of La Mano Peluda vary widely across different regions of Mexico, reflecting the diverse cultural influences and folk traditions found throughout the country. In general, however, it is typically depicted as a disembodied, hairy hand that manifests in times of danger or crisis. According to some accounts, La Mano Peluda is said to roam the countryside at night, seeking out unsuspecting victims to prey upon. Its hairy appendage is said to be imbued with supernatural powers, capable of causing illness, misfortune, or even death to those it touches. In other versions of the legend, La Mano Peluda is portrayed as a guardian spirit that protects the natural world from human encroachment, punishing those who desecrate sacred sites or disturb the balance of nature. Regional Variations Throughout Mexico, there exist numerous regional variations of the La Mano Peluda legend, each with its own unique characteristics and interpretations. In some regions it is known by different names, such as La Mano Negra or La Gara del Diablo, but the basic concept remains consistent across different iterations of the myth. In the Yucatan Peninsula, for example, La Mano Peluda is often associated with the ancient Maya deity known as Apuch, the god of death and the underworld. According to local folklore, Apuch would send his hairy hand to claim the souls of the deceased, dragging them down into the depths of the underworld. This interpretation of La Mano Peluda as a harbinger of death and decay reflects the region's complex religious and cultural history. In other parts of Mexico, such as the northern states of Chihuahua and Sonora, La Mano Peluda is often depicted as a malevolent spirit that haunts remote desert landscapes. According to local legend, travelers who venture too far into the wilderness risk encountering the creature, whose touch is said to bring about madness or death. This interpretation of La Mano Peluda as a supernatural guardian of the desert reflects the harsh realities of life in the arid regions of northern Mexico. Symbolism and Interpretations The symbolism of La Mano Peluda extends beyond its literal representation as a hairy hand, encompassing broader themes of fear, mortality and the supernatural. In many ways, La Mano Peluda serves as a metaphor for the unknown forces that lurk in the darkness, waiting to ensnare unwary travelers on their journey through life. From a psychological perspective, 
La Mano Peluda can be seen as a manifestation of primal fears and anxieties that are common to all human beings. The fear of the unknown, the fear of death, and the fear of the supernatural are all encapsulated in the image of the hairy hand, which serves as a potent symbol of mortality and the impermanence of life. From a sociological perspective, La Mano Peluda can be interpreted as a reflection of societal taboos and anxieties surrounding death, illness, and misfortune. In traditional Mexican culture, death is often viewed as a natural part of the life cycle, and rituals such as the Day of the Dead are celebrated as a means of honoring the deceased and reaffirming the bonds of family and community. However, the fear of death and the unknown still loom large in the collective imagination, as evidenced by the enduring popularity of legends such as La Mano Peluda. Chapter 5. Cultural Significance of La Mano Peluda Role in Transmitting Moral Values In Mexican folklore, La Mano Peluda often serves as a moralizing figure, punishing those who transgress societal norms or moral codes. Tales of encounters with La Mano Peluda typically end with a moral lesson or admonition, warning listeners to heed the consequences of their actions and respect the natural order of the world. For example, in stories where La Mano Peluda punishes those who disturb sacred sites or disrespect the natural world, the creature serves as a guardian of the environment, ensuring that humans maintain a harmonious relationship with the natural world. Similarly, in stories where La Mano Peluda punishes those who engage in immoral or unethical behavior, the creature serves as a symbol of divine justice, meeting out punishment to those who stray from the path of righteousness. Reflection of Societal Fears and Anxieties The legend of La Mano Peluda reflects broader societal fears and anxieties surrounding death, illness, and the supernatural. In traditional Mexican culture, death is often viewed as a natural part of the life cycle, and rituals, such as the Day of the Dead, are celebrated as a means of honoring the deceased and reaffirming the bonds of family and community. However, the fear of death and the unknown still loom large in the collective imagination, as evidenced by the enduring popularity of legends such as La Mano Peluda. By embodying these fears and anxieties in the form of a supernatural creature, La Mano Peluda serves as a potent symbol of mortality and the impermanence of life. Rituals and Practices Associated with the Creature In addition to its role in transmitting moral values and reflecting societal fears, La Mano Peluda is also associated with various rituals and practices aimed at warding off evil spirits and protecting against misfortune. In some rural communities, for example, it is believed that wearing protective amulets or charms adorned with images of La Mano Peluda can ward off malevolent forces and bring good luck. Similarly, rituals such as burning incense or performing cleansing ceremonies are often performed to appease the spirit of La Mano Peluda and ensure the well-being of the community. These rituals serve not only as a means of spiritual protection, but also as a way of reaffirming cultural identity and preserving traditional beliefs in the face of modernization and globalization. Chapter 6. Psychological and Sociological Perspectives – Freudian Analysis of Fear and Taboo From a Freudian perspective, La Mano Peluda can be interpreted as a manifestation of repressed desires and anxieties that are common to all human beings. According to Freud, the fear of the unknown, the fear of death, and the fear of the supernatural are all rooted in the unconscious mind, where they manifest in the form of irrational fears and phobias. La Mano Peluda, with its association with death, illness, and misfortune serves as a potent symbol of these primal fears and anxieties. By externalizing these fears in the form of a supernatural creature, 
individuals are able to confront and come to terms with their own mortality, thereby gaining a sense of control over the unknown forces that govern their lives. Collective unconscious and archetypal images. Building upon Freud's work, Carl Jung proposed the concept of the collective unconscious, a reservoir of shared symbols and archetypes that are common to all human beings. According to Jung, these archetypal images manifest in dreams, myths, and folk tales, serving as a means of expressing universal themes and motifs. La Mano Peluda can be seen as a manifestation of the shadow archetype, which represents the darker aspects of the human psyche, including repressed desires, fears, and anxieties. As such, La Mano Peluda serves as a symbolic representation of the unknown forces that lurk within the collective unconscious, offering insights into the deeper recesses of the human mind, cultural identity, and national consciousness. From a sociological perspective, La Mano Peluda can be interpreted as a reflection of Mexican cultural identity and national consciousness. As a product of indigenous and Spanish folklore, the legend of La Mano Peluda embodies the cultural syncretism and hybridity that define Mexican culture. By exploring the origins and significance of La Mano Peluda, we gain a deeper understanding of the cultural forces that have shaped Mexican society and contributed to its rich tapestry of myths, legends, and folk beliefs. In this way, La Mano Peluda serves not only as a symbol of cultural identity, but also as a source of national pride and solidarity. Chapter 7. La Mano Peluda in Contemporary Culture Revival in Popular Media In recent years, La Mano Peluda has experienced a revival in popular media, with numerous books, films and television shows featuring the creature as a central plot element. From horror movies to children's cartoons, La Mano Peluda has become a ubiquitous presence in Mexican popular culture, captivating audiences of all ages with its eerie charm. One notable example is the Mexican horror film La Mano Peluda, directed by Jaime Humberto Hermosillo and released in 1986. The film tells the story of a group of teenagers who encounter La Mano Peluda while exploring an abandoned mansion, only to be terrorized by the creature's malevolent presence. With its atmospheric cinematography and suspenseful storyline, La Mano Peluda became a cult classic and helped to popularize the legend of the creature among a new generation of viewers. Impact on Mexican horror genre. La Mano Peluda has also had a significant impact on the Mexican horror genre, inspiring a new wave of filmmakers and writers to explore themes of supernatural terror and folk mythology. In addition to La Mano Peluda, there have been numerous other horror films and television shows featuring the creature, each adding their own unique twist to the legend. One notable example is the anthology series La Mano Peluda, which aired on Mexican television in the 1990s. Hosted by radio personality Juan Ramon Saenz, the show featured dramatized retellings of supernatural encounters, including encounters with La Mano Peluda. With its chilling reenactments and spine-tingling sound effects, La Mano Peluda became a beloved fixture of Mexican television and helped to popularize the legend of the creature among a new generation of viewers. Commercialization and Tourism In addition to its impact on popular media, La Mano Peluda has also become a popular subject for commercialization and tourism in Mexico. From souvenir shops selling t-shirts and trinkets adorned with images of the creature to guided tours of purported haunted locations, La Mano Peluda has become a lucrative industry in its own right. One notable example is the town of Zacatecas, which is said to be home to the infamous Casa de la Mano Peluda, or House of the Hairy Hand. According to local legend, the house is haunted by the spirit of a woman whose hand was severed in a tragic accident, 
and visitors can take guided tours of the allegedly haunted premises. While the veracity of these claims is dubious at best, the legend of La Mano Peluda continues to attract tourists seeking thrills and chills in equal measure. Chapter 8. Comparative Analysis Similar Creatures in Other Cultures While La Mano Peluda is unique to Mexican folklore, it shares similarities with other mythical creatures found in cultures around the world. In European folklore, for example, there are numerous legends of disembodied hands that roam the countryside, such as the Hand of Glory in English folklore and the Mano Cornuda in Italian folklore. Similarly, in indigenous cultures of the Americas, there are legends of spectral beings that manifest in the form of disembodied hands, such as the Irkala in Inuit mythology and the Sukimono in Native American folklore. El Duende El Duende is a concept deeply ingrained in Spanish and Latin American folklore and culture. It refers to a supernatural being or spirit often associated with mischief, magic and the arts. The term Duende can be traced back to ancient Spanish and Latin American folklore where it was believed to be a mischievous creature that inhabited the natural world, particularly forests, caves and other secluded places. The word duende has its roots in Spanish, where it can be translated as goblin, sprite or elf. However, its meaning goes beyond these literal translations and encompasses a complex set of cultural and artistic connotations. In the realm of art and literature, El Duende is often described as a mysterious force or energy that inspires creativity and passion in artists, particularly in the performing arts such as music, dance and theatre. The concept of El Duende has been explored and celebrated by artists and writers throughout history, most notably by Spanish poet and playwright Federico García Lorca. In his essay, Theory and Play of the Duende, 1933, Lorca delves into the elusive nature of El Duende and its profound impact on artistic expression. He describes El Duende as a powerful and enigmatic force that resides within the artist and manifests itself in moments of intense emotion and authenticity. According to Lorca, El Duende is closely related to the concept of Duende, which he describes as a combination of heightened awareness, emotional depth and a sense of connection with one's innermost desires and fears. Unlike the concept of Muse, which implies a more passive inspiration, El Duende is dynamic and unpredictable, often emerging unexpectedly and taking control of the artist's creative process. Lorca emphasizes the importance of embracing El Duende and allowing it to guide artistic expression, even if it means confronting darkness and uncertainty. He warns against the dangers of seeking perfection and superficial beauty in art, arguing that true artistic greatness lies in the ability to tap into the raw and primal forces of El Duende. El Pombero El Pombero is a mythical creature deeply rooted in the folklore of South America particularly in the rural areas of countries like Paraguay, Argentina, Uruguay and Brazil. This enigmatic being, often described as a small humanoid figure with supernatural abilities, has captivated the imaginations of generations, becoming an integral part of local legends and oral traditions. In this comprehensive exploration, we delve into the origins, characteristics, folklore, regional variations and cultural significance of El Pombero. Furthermore, we will analyze the psychological and sociological aspects of this mythical entity and examine its presence in modern interpretations and popular culture. Origins of El Pombero The origins of El Pombero can be traced back to indigenous beliefs and traditions prevalent in South America long before the arrival of European colonizers. Indigenous cultures across the continent had rich mythologies populated by various supernatural beings, often associated with nature, 
and the spiritual realm. As European settlers arrived and established colonies, their own folklore intertwined with indigenous beliefs, giving rise to a diverse tapestry of mythical creatures. El Pombero is believed to have originated from the Guarani people, one of the largest indigenous groups in South America, whose territory spanned across present-day Paraguay, parts of Brazil, Argentina and Bolivia. The Guarani had a complex cosmology and a deep reverence for nature, viewing the natural world as inhabited by spirits and supernatural entities. Among these entities was Pombero, a mischievous and elusive creature closely associated with the forests and wilderness. Characteristics and Physical Description Descriptions of El Pombero vary slightly across different regions, but there are common characteristics that persist throughout its portrayal in folklore. Generally depicted as a small, humanoid creature, El Pombero is said to stand about three feet tall, with a robust and muscular build. Its skin is often described as dark and hairy, resembling that of a monkey or a small ape. It is believed to have piercing red eyes that glow in the darkness, giving it an eerie and unsettling appearance. Regional Variations and Cultural Significance While the basic characteristics of El Pombero remain consistent across different regions, there are notable variations in its portrayal and significance within local cultures. In Paraguay, for example, El Pombero is often depicted as a protector of the forest and its inhabitants, revered by indigenous communities who view it as a guardian spirit. Offerings of tobacco, alcohol or food are sometimes left at the edge of the forest as a gesture of respect and appeasement to El Pombero. In Argentina and Uruguay, on the other hand, El Pombero is more commonly associated with mischief and trickery, feared by farmers and villagers who believe it can bring misfortune or illness upon them. Superstitious practices such as hanging garlic or placing crosses at the entrance to homes are sometimes employed to ward off the influence of El Pombero and other malevolent spirits. Despite these variations, the cultural significance of El Pombero remains strong throughout South America, serving as a link to the region's indigenous heritage and a reminder of the enduring power of folklore and oral tradition. In rural communities where belief in supernatural beings is still prevalent, stories of encounters with El Pombero are passed down from generation to generation, reinforcing cultural identity and a sense of connection to the natural world. Psychological and Sociological Perspectives From a psychological perspective, the myth of El Pombero can be seen as a manifestation of primal fears and anxieties related to the wilderness and the unknown. The dense forests of South America, with their tangled undergrowth and hidden dangers, have long been a source of fascination and fear for human societies. The idea of a mysterious creature lurking in the shadows, capable of appearing and disappearing at will, taps into our innate fear of the dark and the unseen. Sociologically, the legend of El Pombero reflects the complex relationship between human communities and their natural environment. In rural areas where agriculture and subsistence hunting are still prevalent, the forest is both a source of sustenance and a place of danger. El Pombero embodies the dual nature of the forest, representing both its bounty and its potential for harm. By personifying these conflicting aspects of the natural world, the myth of El Pombero helps communities make sense of their surroundings and navigate the complexities of rural life. Modern interpretations and popular culture depictions. In recent years, El Pombero has gained renewed interest and attention as South American countries grapple with issues of cultural identity and heritage preservation. Artists, writers and filmmakers have drawn inspiration from the legend of El Pombero, incorporating it into works of fiction, music and visual art. 
In Paraguay, for example, the character of El Pombero has appeared in literature and theater, serving as a symbol of national identity and cultural pride. In popular culture, El Pombero has also made appearances in television shows, films and video games, often portrayed as a supernatural creature with magical powers and a mischievous demeanor. These modern interpretations of El Pombero reflect the enduring appeal of folklore and myth in contemporary society, as well as the continued relevance of traditional beliefs and customs in an increasingly globalized world. Curupira Curupira stands out as a prominent figure in Brazilian folklore. Revered and feared in equal measure, Curupira embodies the untamed wilderness, guarding its secrets and punishing those who dare to disrespect the natural order. In this comprehensive exploration, we delve deep into the origins, characteristics, cultural significance and enduring legacy of Curupira. From its mythical roots to its modern interpretations, we unravel the layers of symbolism and meaning woven into the fabric of this legendary creature. Through this journey, we seek to understand not only Kurupira itself, but also the cultural and historical contexts that have shaped its portrayal and enduring presence in Brazilian folklore. Origins of Kurupira To understand Kurupira, one must first journey into the rich tapestry of Brazilian folklore, where myths and legends intertwine with the land itself. The origins of Curupira can be traced back to indigenous cultures inhabiting the vast rainforests of Brazil long before the arrival of European settlers. Among these indigenous peoples, reverence for nature and the spirits that dwell within it was deeply ingrained in their belief systems. The name Curupira is believed to have originated from the Tupi-Guarani language spoken by indigenous tribes across Brazil. While the precise etymology is debated among scholars, the term is often interpreted as a combination of Kuru, meaning body or form, and Pira, meaning like fire or flame. This linguistic interpretation reflects the elemental nature of Kurupira, often depicted as a fiery being connected to the life force of the forest. In indigenous mythology, Kurupira was often depicted as a mischievous guardian of the forest, possessing supernatural powers to protect its flora and fauna from harm. Stories were told of hunters who ventured too deep into the jungle, only to become disoriented and lost under the watchful gaze of Kurupira. Others spoke of children who wandered off into the woods, only to be spirited away by the elusive creature, never to be seen again. Characteristics of Kurupira Descriptions of Kurupira vary across different regions and communities, but certain characteristics remain consistent in the folklore. One of the most iconic features of Kurupira is its physical appearance, which is often depicted as a small, humanoid figure with bright red or flaming hair. This fiery mane is said to symbolize the creature's connection to the life force of the forest, serving as both a warning and a beacon to those who encounter it. In addition to its fiery hair, Kurupira is often depicted with backward-facing feet, a trait that serves both practical and symbolic purposes. Legend has it that these reversed feet enable Kurupira to deceive and confuse intruders, leaving them wandering in circles and unable to find their way out of the forest. Symbolically, the backward-facing feet represent the creature's role as a guardian of the natural world, walking in harmony with the rhythms of nature and protecting its sacred spaces from those who would seek to exploit or desecrate them. Another common attribute of Kurupira is its association with certain animals, particularly wolves and wild boars. In some versions of the folklore, Kurupira is said to ride atop these creatures as it patrols the forest, using their keen senses and instinctual knowledge to detect intruders and ward off threats. This symbiotic relationship between Kurupira and the animals of the forest reinforces the creature's role as a protector 
and steward of the natural world, forging bonds of kinship and mutual respect between the spirits of the wilderness. Cultural Significance of Curupira Throughout Brazilian history, Curupira has played a significant role in shaping the cultural identity of the country and its people. As a symbol of the untamed wilderness, Curupira embodies the spirit of the Brazilian rainforest, with all its beauty, mystery and danger. For indigenous communities, Curupira represents a connection to their ancestral lands and a reminder of their enduring relationship with the natural world. As European settlers began to explore and colonize Brazil, they encountered indigenous beliefs and folklore, including stories of Curupira. Over time, these tales became woven into the fabric of Brazilian culture, blending with European traditions to create a rich tapestry of myths and legends. Curupira became a figure of fascination and fear, inspiring artists, writers and storytellers to explore its significance in literature, art and popular culture. In Brazilian literature, Curupira has been depicted in various forms, from folk tales and poems to novels and plays. Writers such as Monteiro Lobato, José Bento Monteiro Lobato and Jorge Amado have incorporated Curupira into their works, exploring themes of nature, identity and the clash between tradition and modernity. These literary representations have helped to popularize Curupira both within Brazil and abroad, introducing new generations to the folklore of the country. In addition to literature, Curupira has also made its mark on Brazilian art and visual culture. Painters, sculptors and other artists have drawn inspiration from the creature's mythical qualities, creating vivid and evocative representations that capture its essence. From traditional wood carvings to contemporary digital art, Curupira continues to be a source of creative inspiration for artists seeking to explore the intersection of nature and spirituality in Brazilian culture. Modern Interpretations of Curupira In the modern era, Curupira remains a potent symbol of Brazil's natural heritage and cultural identity, despite the rapid pace of urbanization and environmental degradation. As the Amazon rainforest faces increasing threats from deforestation, mining and agricultural expansion, the legend of Curupira takes on new relevance, serving as a reminder of the importance of protecting and preserving the world's most biodiverse ecosystem. Environmental activists and conservationists have adopted Curupira as a mascot for their efforts to save the Amazon, using the creature's iconic image to raise awareness about the urgent need for action. Through campaigns, protests and educational initiatives, these advocates seek to mobilize public support for policies and practices that promote sustainable development and protect indigenous rights. In popular culture, Curupira continues to captivate audiences around the world through films, television shows and video games. From animated cartoons aimed at children to dark fantasy epics for adults, Curupira has been reimagined in countless ways, reflecting the enduring appeal of its mythical qualities. Whether portrayed as a benevolent guardian or a vengeful spirit, Curupira remains a compelling figure in the imagination of storytellers and audiences alike. The Mapping Wari The Mapping Wari is a cryptid that has long fascinated those interested in folklore, cryptozoology, and indigenous beliefs in the Amazon rainforest. This creature is said to inhabit the dense jungles of South America, particularly in Brazil and surrounding countries. Descriptions of the Mapping Wari vary widely, but common features include its immense size, a foul odor, long claws, backward-facing feet, and a single eye in the center of its forehead. Some accounts also mention the creature possessing a mouth in its belly. Origins and Cultural Context The Mapping Wari's origins can be traced back to the folklore and oral traditions of indigenous peoples living in the Amazon rainforest. Among these tribes are the Tupi and Guarani people, 
whose myths and legends often feature supernatural beings and creatures of the forest. The name Mapinguari itself is believed to derive from indigenous languages, with interpretations varying between roaring animal or fetid beast. In indigenous mythology, the Mapinguari is often depicted as a powerful and malevolent creature, capable of causing harm to humans who venture too deep into the jungle. It is sometimes associated with supernatural powers or curses, and stories of encounters with the creature serve as cautionary tales to those who dare to disturb the natural order of the forest. Descriptions and Characteristics Descriptions of the Mapinguari vary widely, reflecting the diverse accounts provided by those who claim to have encountered the creature. However, certain characteristics are commonly associated with the creature across different narratives. Size The Mapinguari is typically described as being large and bulky, with some accounts likening its size to that of a bear or gorilla. Appearance One of the most distinctive features of the Mapinguari is its single eye, located in the center of its forehead. It is said to emit a powerful and intimidating gaze. Other reported features include long claws, backward-facing feet, and a mouth located on its belly. Odor Many who claim to have encountered the Mapinguari describe a foul and overpowering stench emanating from the creature. This odor is often likened to that of rotting flesh or excrement. Sounds The Mapinguari is said to emit loud roars or howls, which can be heard echoing through the jungle. These vocalizations are often associated with the creature's territorial behavior or as a warning to intruders. Reported Sightings and Encounters Reports of sightings and encounters with the Mapinguari have been documented for centuries, with accounts originating from both indigenous communities and non-indigenous explorers of the Amazon rainforest. These encounters often occur in remote and densely forested areas where the creature is believed to dwell. While many of these sightings remain anecdotal and lack concrete evidence, they have contributed to the enduring mystique surrounding the Mapinguari. Some researchers and cryptozoologists have attempted to collect physical evidence, such as footprints or hair samples, to support the existence of the creature. However, such efforts have thus far yielded inconclusive results. In addition to eyewitness reports, there have been occasional alleged photographs and videos purporting to capture the Mapinguari on film. However, the authenticity of these images is often called into question, with many being dismissed as hoaxes or misidentifications of known animals. Scientific Perspectives From a scientific standpoint, the existence of the Mapinguari is highly contentious and remains a subject of skepticism within the mainstream scientific community. Critics argue that the creature's reported characteristics and behaviors are more likely to be based on myth and folklore rather than empirical evidence. One of the primary challenges in substantiating claims of the Mapinguari's existence lies in the lack of verifiable evidence, such as skeletal remains, DNA samples, or clear photographs. In the absence of such evidence, scientists are hesitant to entertain the possibility of a large, undiscovered species inhabiting the Amazon rainforest. Furthermore, the ecological dynamics of the Amazon rainforest are well studied, and the presence of a large, apex predator like the Mapinguari would likely have significant implications for the ecosystem. The absence of tangible ecological impacts attributed to the creature casts further doubt on its existence. Cultural Significance and Modern Interpretations Despite the skepticism of the scientific community, the Mapinguari continues to hold cultural significance within the Amazon region and beyond. Its presence in indigenous mythology serves as a reminder of the deep connection between human communities and the natural world, as well as the importance of respecting the boundaries of the forest. In modern times, the Mapinguari has also captured the imagination of filmmakers, writers, and artists, inspiring works of fiction and speculative documentaries exploring the creature's existence. While these interpretations often take creative liberties with the original folklore, they contribute to the ongoing fascination with the Mapinguari and its place in popular culture. Additionally, the Mapinguari serves as a symbol of the ongoing struggle to preserve the Amazon rainforest and protect the biodiversity it harbors. As deforestation and habitat destruction threaten the delicate balance of the ecosystem, the preservation of indigenous knowledge and cultural heritage becomes increasingly important in safeguarding the region's natural resources. 
Brazilian folklore is rich with tales of mystical creatures that inhabit the vast and diverse landscapes of the country. Among these creatures, the Encantado holds a special place, captivating the imagination of generations with its mysterious and enchanting nature. In this comprehensive exploration, we delve into the depths of Brazilian folklore to uncover the origins, characteristics, and cultural significance of the Encantado. Origins of Brazilian Folklore Before diving into the specifics of the Encantado, it's essential to understand the broader context of Brazilian folklore. The folklore of Brazil is a tapestry woven from the diverse cultural influences of its indigenous peoples, African slaves, and European colonizers. These cultural threads intertwine to create a vibrant and dynamic tapestry of myths, legends, and supernatural beings. Indigenous Roots Brazil's indigenous peoples, such as the Tupi and Guarani, have a deep connection to the land and its spirits. Their rich oral traditions are replete with stories of mythical beings that inhabit the rivers, forests, and mountains of the region. These indigenous myths laid the foundation for many elements of Brazilian folklore, including the Encantado. African Influences The transatlantic slave trade brought millions of Africans to Brazil, bringing with them their own rich folklore traditions. These traditions merged with those of indigenous peoples and European colonizers, creating a syncretic tapestry of beliefs and stories. African deities and spirits, such as the Oryxes and Caboclos, became intertwined with Brazilian folklore, shaping the mythos of creatures like the Encantado. European Contributions Portuguese colonization introduced European folklore motifs to Brazil, including tales of knights, princesses, and mythical creatures. These European elements merged with indigenous and African traditions to form the basis of Brazilian folklore as we know it today. The Encantado, with its supernatural allure and enigmatic origins, exemplifies this fusion of cultural influences. The Enigmatic Encantado At the heart of Brazilian folklore lies the mysterious figure of the Encantado. These supernatural beings are said to inhabit the rivers, lakes, and waterways of Brazil, captivating and enchanting all who encounter them. But who are the Encantados, and what secrets do they hold? Characteristics of the Encantado The Encantado are often described as shapeshifters, capable of assuming both human and animal forms at will. In their human guise, they are said to be strikingly beautiful, with mesmerizing eyes and captivating smiles. In their animal form, they may appear as dolphins, serpents, or other aquatic creatures, reflecting their connection to the water. Legends and Lore Countless legends surround the Encantado, each one adding to the mystique and allure of these enigmatic beings. Some stories portray them as benevolent guardians of the rivers, protecting the natural world and its inhabitants. Others depict them as mischievous tricksters, luring unsuspecting humans into their underwater realms for their own amusement. Cultural Significance The Encantado hold a special place in Brazilian folklore, serving as symbols of the country's deep spiritual connection to the natural world. They embody the dualities of nature, representing both the beauty and danger of the rivers and forests. Their stories reflect the complex relationship between humans and the environment, highlighting the importance of living in harmony with nature. Encounters with the Encantado Throughout history, there have been numerous accounts of encounters with the Encantado, each one adding to their mystique and allure. These encounters range from fleeting glimpses to profound experiences that leave a lasting impression on those who experience them. Tales of Seduction One of the most common themes in Encantado folklore is their ability to seduce unsuspecting humans with their otherworldly beauty and charm. According to legend, those who encounter an Encantado may find themselves irresistibly drawn to them, unable to resist their enchanting allure. These encounters often end in tragedy, as the human is lured into the depths of the river, never to be seen again. Protective Guardians Despite their reputation as seductive tricksters, some stories portray the Encantado as benevolent guardians of the rivers and forests.
In these tales, they are said to protect the natural world and its inhabitants from harm, using their supernatural powers to ward off danger and maintain balance in the ecosystem. These encounters with the Encantado are often seen as blessings, bringing good fortune to those who encounter them. Mysterious Disappearances In some regions of Brazil, mysterious disappearances are attributed to the Encantado, who are said to abduct humans and take them to their underwater realms. These disappearances are often accompanied by strange phenomena, such as unexplained lights or sounds emanating from the rivers. Despite efforts to uncover the truth behind these disappearances, the Encantado remain shrouded in mystery, rituals, and offerings. In traditional Brazilian folklore, rituals and offerings play a crucial role in appeasing the spirits and ensuring the safety of those who inhabit the land. When it comes to the Encantado, these rituals take on a special significance, serving as a way to honor and appease these powerful beings. Offerings to the River Spirits In many communities, offerings are made to the river spirits, including the Encantado, as a way to seek their protection and blessings. These offerings may include food, flowers, or other symbolic items, which are placed in the water as a sign of respect and reverence. By making these offerings, people hope to establish a positive relationship with the spirits of the rivers and ensure their continued goodwill. Rituals of Protection Rituals of protection are also common in communities where the Encantado are believed to dwell. These rituals may involve prayers, incantations, or ceremonial rites performed by shamans or spiritual leaders. The purpose of these rituals is to ward off the influence of the Encantado and protect individuals from their seductive powers. Festivals and Celebrations In some regions of Brazil, Festivals and celebrations are held to honor the Encantado and other river spirits. These festivals often feature music, dance, and elaborate rituals performed by local communities. By coming together to celebrate the spirits of the rivers, people hope to strengthen their connection to the natural world and ensure their continued protection and blessings. Encantado in Popular Culture the allure of the Encantado extends beyond traditional folklore, influencing popular culture in Brazil and beyond. From literature and music to film and television, these mystical beings continue to captivate the imagination of audiences around the world. Literary Legacy Brazilian literature is replete with references to the Encantado, with authors drawing inspiration from folklore to create compelling stories and characters. From magical realism to fantasy fiction, the Encantado has found its way into the pages of countless novels, short stories, and poems, captivating readers with its supernatural allure. Musical Myths In the realm of music, the Encantado has inspired artists across genres, from traditional folk songs to contemporary pop hits. Their mysterious nature and seductive charm make them the perfect subject for lyrical exploration with musicians weaving tales of love, loss, and enchantment into their songs. Cinematic Sorcery In recent years, the Encantado has made its way onto the silver screen, with filmmakers drawing on Brazilian folklore to create captivating cinematic experiences. From animated adventures to live-action dramas, these films bring the mystical world of the Encantado to life, captivating audiences with their otherworldly beauty and enchanting tales. The Legacy of the Encantado As we explore the rich tapestry of Brazilian folklore, the legacy of the Encantado looms large, captivating and enchanting all who encounter them. From their origins in indigenous myths to their enduring presence in popular culture, these mystical beings continue to inspire wonder and awe reminding us of the deep spiritual connection between humans and the natural world. Preserving Tradition In an age of rapid modernization and globalization, the preservation of traditional folklore is more important than ever. By keeping the stories of the Encantado alive, we ensure that future generations will continue to be captivated by their mystical allure and enchanted by the rich tapestry of Brazilian folklore. Environmental Awareness 
The tales of the Encantado also serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of environmental stewardship. By highlighting the beauty and fragility of the natural world, these stories inspire us to take action to protect the rivers, forests, and ecosystems that sustain life on Earth. In this way, the legacy of the Encantado extends far beyond the realm of folklore, shaping our attitudes and behaviors towards the environment for generations to come. Yakamama Yakamama the giant serpent, believed to dwell in the depths of the region's waterways. Yakamama, whose name translates to Mother of the Waters in Quechua, holds a prominent place in the folklore of numerous tribes inhabiting the Amazon basin. This serpent, with its purported enormous size and mythical attributes, has fascinated explorers, scientists, and storytellers for generations. Despite the absence of concrete evidence confirming its existence, the legend of Yakamama persists as a testament to the enduring relationship between human societies and the natural world. Its presence in indigenous mythology reflects a profound reverence for the rivers, lakes, and jungles that sustain life in the Amazon. Furthermore, Nakamama's cultural significance extends beyond mere folklore, permeating various aspects of Amazonian life, from spiritual beliefs to ecological practices. In this comprehensive study, we embark on a journey to unravel the mysteries surrounding Yakamama. Through an interdisciplinary exploration encompassing mythology, biology, anthropology, and environmental science, we aim to elucidate the origins, cultural significance, ecological implications, and psychological impact of this legendary serpent. By delving into the depths of Amazonian lore and scientific inquiry, we seek to shed light on the enduring allure of Yakamama and its profound resonance with human imagination and ecological consciousness. Mythological Origins of Yakamama The origins of Yakamama trace back to the oral traditions of indigenous tribes inhabiting the Amazon rainforest. Among these tribes, including the Quechua, Shipibo Kanibo, and Tikuna, Tales of giant serpents lurking in the depths of rivers and lakes have been passed down through generations. While the specifics of the Yakamama legend vary among different cultures, certain common themes and motifs emerge, painting a vivid picture of this mythical creature. In Quechua mythology, Yakamama is often depicted as a colossal serpent with shimmering scales that glisten like precious gems in the sunlight. According to legend, Yakamama is the guardian of the rivers and lakes, possessing the power to control the flow of water and influence the fertility of the land. Its lair is said to be hidden deep beneath the murky depths, accessible only to those deemed worthy by the spirits of the jungle. Among the Shipibo Kanibo people, Yakamama is known as Sakamama, the mother of the forest. In their folklore, Sakamama is revered as a benevolent deity who watches over the animals and plants of the rainforest. She is said to possess healing powers, capable of curing ailments and bestowing blessings upon those who show reverence for the natural world. However, Sakamama is also portrayed as a fearsome guardian, fiercely protecting her domain from those who seek to exploit its resources. The Tikuna people, indigenous to the western Amazon basin, tell tales of a serpent deity known as Boyuna, which bears striking similarities to Yakamama. Boyuna is described as an immense anaconda with the ability to shapeshift into human form. According to Tikuna mythology, Boyuna is both a creator and destroyer, embodying the dual nature of existence in the rainforest. While revered as a deity, Boyuna is also feared for its unpredictable temperament and formidable power. Across diverse Amazonian cultures, the myth of Yakamama serves as a symbolic representation of the primal forces that govern the natural world. It embodies the interconnectedness of all living beings and the delicate balance between humanity and the environment. Through rituals, songs, and oral traditions, indigenous peoples pay homage to Yakamama, seeking to appease its spirit and ensure harmony within the rainforest. Cultural Significance of Yakamama The legend of Yakamama transcends mere mythological storytelling, 
exerting a profound influence on the cultural identity and spiritual practices of Amazonian indigenous tribes. Within these communities, Yakamama is venerated as a sacred being, deserving of reverence and respect. Its presence looms large in rituals, ceremonies, and everyday life, shaping the beliefs and values of those who dwell in the heart of the rainforest. Central to the cultural significance of Yakamama is its association with water, the lifeblood of the Amazon basin. Rivers, lakes, and streams are not merely physical entities but manifestations of spiritual forces, inhabited by the guardian spirit of Yakamama. Indigenous peoples view water as a source of sustenance, cleansing, and renewal, imbued with the power to nurture life and maintain balance within the ecosystem. Yakamama's role as the custodian of waterways endows it with great importance in agricultural practices, which form the cornerstone of Amazonian societies. During planting and harvesting seasons, rituals are conducted to honor Yakamama and seek its blessings for bountiful crops. Offerings of fruits, flowers, and ceremonial objects are made to appease the serpent deity and ensure the fertility of the land. Moreover, Yakamama is deeply intertwined with traditional healing practices among indigenous tribes. Shamans, known as curanderos or ayahuascaros, invoke the spirit of Yakamama to facilitate healing ceremonies and spiritual journeys. The serpent's wisdom is believed to hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of the natural world and restoring harmony to the body, mind, and soul. The cultural significance of Yakamama extends beyond spiritual beliefs to permeate various aspects of Amazonian art, music, and storytelling. Folklore depicting the exploits of heroes and heroines confronting the serpent's wrath serves as a source of inspiration and moral guidance for younger generations. Through dance, song, and visual arts, indigenous peoples pay homage to Yakamama keeping the ancient traditions alive in the face of modernization and cultural change. In summary, the cultural significance of Yakamama lies in its embodiment of the profound bond between humanity and the natural world. As a symbol of water, fertility, and spiritual wisdom, Yakamama holds sway over the hearts and minds of those who dwell in the Amazon rainforest, shaping their worldview and guiding their interactions with the environment biological implications, exploring the possibility of Yakamama. While Yakamama primarily exists within the realm of mythology and folklore, the question of its biological plausibility has intrigued scientists and explorers for centuries. Could such a creature truly inhabit the depths of the Amazonian waterways, or is it merely a figment of human imagination? In this section, we delve into the biological implications of Yakamama examining the feasibility of its existence based on available evidence and scientific knowledge. At the heart of the Yakamama legend lies the depiction of a massive serpent capable of reaching extraordinary lengths, far beyond that of any known snake species. According to indigenous accounts, Yakamama is said to grow to lengths of up to 100 feet or more, dwarfing even the largest anacondas and pythons. Such colossal proportions raise questions regarding the physiological constraints and ecological feasibility of sustaining a creature of such size within the confines of the Amazon ecosystem. In the realm of herpetology, the study of reptiles and amphibians, the largest known snake species is the green anaconda, Eunectes murinus, which can attain lengths of over 20 feet and weigh several hundred pounds. While formidable in size, the green anaconda pales in comparison to the exaggerated dimensions attributed to Yakamama in indigenous folklore. Moreover, the ecological requirements of a serpent of such immense size pose significant challenges in terms of prey availability, habitat suitability, and reproductive biology. One proposed explanation for the existence of Yakamama revolves around the concept of giganism a phenomenon observed in certain animal species inhabiting isolated island ecosystems or nutrient-rich environments. In such environments, individuals may evolve larger body sizes as an adaptive response to ecological pressures, such as competition for resources or predation avoidance. 
However, the Amazon rainforest, while rich in biodiversity, may not provide the necessary conditions to support the evolution of a snake species reaching the colossal dimensions attributed to Yakamama. Another hypothesis posits that the legend of Yakamama may have originated from encounters with large constrictor snakes, such as anacondas or boas, whose size and behavior could have been exaggerated over time through oral storytelling and cultural embellishment. Indeed, eyewitness accounts of encounters with anacondas have often been subject to exaggeration and distortion, leading to inflated estimates of their size and capabilities. Additionally, the notion of shape-shifting serpents, as depicted in Tikuna mythology, further blurs the line between reality and fantasy, complicating efforts to discern the biological basis of the Yakamama legend. While snakes possess remarkable abilities to contort their bodies and camouflage themselves within their surroundings, the idea of a serpent assuming human form stretches the bounds of scientific plausibility. In light of these considerations, the existence of Yakamama as a literal biological entity remains highly improbable based on current scientific understanding. While the legend may be rooted in observations of real snake species and shaped by cultural interpretations, the fantastical aspects of Yakamama's portrayal defy rational explanation within the framework of natural history and evolutionary biology. Nevertheless, the enduring allure of Yakamama persists as a testament to the power of myth and the human capacity for imagination. Its portrayal as a mystical guardian of the waters reflects humanity's deep-seated reverence for the natural world and our desire to find meaning and purpose within the mysteries of existence. Ecological Perspectives – Yakamama and the Amazon Rainforest Beyond its cultural and mythological significance, the legend of Yakamama carries ecological implications that shed light on the complex dynamics of the Amazon rainforest ecosystem. As a creature intimately associated with waterways and biodiversity, Yakamama serves as a symbolic representation of the interconnectedness of species and habitats within the world's largest tropical rainforest. Central to the ecological perspective of Yakamama is its role as a keystone species, exerting disproportionate influence on the structure and function of the ecosystem. While the existence of Yakamama as a literal biological entity may be questionable, the concept of a giant serpent occupying a top predator niche within the food web has profound implications for ecological dynamics. In the absence of large terrestrial predators such as big cats or wolves, aquatic environments in the Amazon basin are dominated by species adapted to life in water, including caimans, river otters, and various species of fish. The introduction of a hypothetical apex predator such as Yakamama would undoubtedly alter the balance of power within freshwater ecosystems, potentially leading to cascading effects throughout the food chain. One possible scenario involves the regulation of prey populations through predation pressure exerted by Yakamama, which could help prevent overexploitation of resources and maintain ecological balance. By controlling the abundance of herbivorous fish species, Yakamama may indirectly influence the health of aquatic vegetation and water quality, thereby shaping the habitat suitability for other organisms. Furthermore, the presence of a mythical serpent deity like Yakamama may serve as a cultural deterrent against destructive practices such as overfishing, pollution, and habitat degradation. Indigenous peoples who revere Yakamama as a guardian of the waters may be more inclined to adopt sustainable resource management strategies that prioritize conservation and stewardship of natural resources. However, the ecological implications of Yakamama must be interpreted with caution, given the speculative nature of its existence and the potential for unintended consequences. The introduction of a novel apex predator into fragile ecosystems could disrupt established ecological relationships and lead to unforeseen ecological consequences, including population declines, habitat fragmentation, and species extinctions. 
Moreover, the perpetuation of mythical narratives such as Yakamama may obscure scientific understanding of ecological processes and impede conservation efforts aimed at addressing real threats to biodiversity in the Amazon rainforest. By conflating myth with reality, there is a risk of overlooking the urgent need to address pressing environmental challenges such as deforestation, climate change, and habitat loss. In conclusion, while the legend of Yakamama offers valuable insights into the cultural and ecological dynamics of the Amazon rainforest, its interpretation must be approached with a critical lens that acknowledges the distinction between myth and scientific reality. By embracing indigenous knowledge while integrating scientific evidence, we can gain a deeper understanding of the intricate relationships between human societies and the natural world. Fostering conservation efforts that honor both cultural heritage and ecological integrity. Psychological and Sociocultural Impact of Yakamama The legend of Yakamama exerts a profound influence not only on the ecological dynamics of the Amazon rainforest, but also on the psychological and sociocultural fabric of indigenous communities. As a symbol of primal forces and natural phenomena, Nakamama holds sway over the collective consciousness, shaping beliefs, values, and behaviors in ways that resonate across generations. At the psychological level, the myth of Yakamama taps into primal fears and desires rooted in the human psyche. The image of a giant serpent lurking in the depths of water evokes primal instincts of survival and vulnerability, reflecting humanity's age-old struggle to coexist with the untamed forces of nature. Moreover, the concept of a benevolent guardian deity offers solace and reassurance in the face of uncertainty, providing a sense of connection and belonging within the natural world. Socioculturally, Akamama serves as a unifying symbol that transcends linguistic, ethnic, and territorial boundaries uniting diverse indigenous tribes under a common cultural heritage. Through shared myths, rituals, and ceremonies, communities forge bonds of solidarity and mutual respect, reaffirming their collective identity and resilience in the face of external pressures. Furthermore, the legend of Yakamama plays a pivotal role in the transmission of traditional knowledge and values from one generation to the next. Elders pass down stories of the serpent deity to younger members of the community, imparting wisdom, moral lessons, and ecological teachings that guide their interactions with the natural world. In this way, Yakamama serves as a cultural touchstone that preserves indigenous heritage and fosters intergenerational continuity. Luzmala Luzmala stands as a particularly intriguing enigma. Originating in Latin America, Luzmala, translated as evil light or bad light, is said to be a glowing, ghostly apparition that appears in the darkness of night, often in rural areas or graveyards. This phenomenon has captured the imagination of many, inspiring numerous stories, myths, and even scientific inquiries. Origins and Cultural Significance Luz Mala finds its origins deeply entrenched in the rich tapestry of Latin American folklore. The legend varies across different regions, but its core elements typically revolve around the appearance of a mysterious light that is often associated with death, the supernatural, or impending doom. In some versions of the legend, Luzmala is believed to be the spirit of someone who died tragically or violently, manifesting as a flickering, ethereal glow in the night. Historical Context the roots of Luz Mala can be traced back to the amalgamation of indigenous beliefs with Spanish colonial influences during the conquest and colonization of Latin America. Indigenous cultures had their own spiritual traditions and beliefs in supernatural entities, while the arrival of European colonizers introduced Christianity and its own pantheon of spirits and apparitions. Over time, these diverse cultural elements merged giving rise to new legends and myths, including Luz Mala. Cultural Significance Luz Mala holds significant cultural importance in many Latin American societies. It serves as a cautionary tale, warning against venturing into dangerous or unfamiliar territories after dark. 
The fear of encountering Luz Mala instills a sense of respect for the unknown and reinforces cultural taboos surrounding death and the afterlife. Additionally, the legend of Luz Mala has permeated various forms of artistic expression, from literature and music to film and visual art, further solidifying its place in the cultural consciousness. Characteristics of Luz Mala Descriptions of Luz Mala vary, but common characteristics include a faint, phosphorescent glow that hovers close to the ground or follows a specific path. The light is often described as flickering or pulsating, casting an eerie illumination that inspires both awe and dread in those who behold it. Witnesses frequently report feeling an overwhelming sense of fear or unease in the presence of Luz Mala, leading to its association with malevolent forces or supernatural entities. Encounters and Testimonies Throughout history, there have been numerous reported sightings and encounters with Luz Mala, particularly in rural areas where superstitions and folklore hold sway. These encounters range from first-hand experiences recounted by individuals who claim to have seen the phenomenon to second-hand testimonies passed down through generations. While skeptics dismiss such accounts as mere superstition or hallucination, believers maintain that Luz Mala is a real, tangible presence that defies conventional explanation. Variations and Interpretations The legend of Luz Mala exhibits remarkable variability across different regions and cultures. In some versions, the phenomenon is believed to be a benign spirit guiding lost travelers or protecting sacred sites, while in others, it is depicted as a harbinger of misfortune or impending death. Interpretations of Luz Mala also reflect cultural attitudes towards death, the supernatural, and the unknown, with some viewing it as a symbol of continuity and spiritual connection, while others regard it with fear and apprehension. Scientific Explanations One of the prevailing scientific theories regarding Luz Mala involves natural atmospheric phenomena that produce luminous emissions, such as ball lightning, St. Elmo's fire, or swamp gas. These phenomena occur under specific conditions, such as the presence of electrical discharges, ionization of gases, or bioluminescent organisms, and can create glowing lights that resemble the appearance of Luz Mala. However, while these explanations offer a plausible scientific basis, they do not fully account for the cultural and psychological dimensions of the phenomenon. Optical Illusions and Perception Another scientific perspective posits that encounters with Luz Mala may be attributed to optical illusions, misperceptions, or psychological factors. Human perception is inherently subjective and prone to errors, especially in low-light conditions or when under stress or anxiety. The brain's interpretation of visual stimuli can be influenced by cognitive biases, cultural conditioning, and prior beliefs, leading individuals to perceive ordinary phenomena as supernatural or paranormal. Thus, what appears to be Luz Mala may be nothing more than a trick of the mind. Psychosocial Factors Beyond the realm of optics and perception, Luz Mala can also be understood through the lens of psychosocial dynamics, including collective hysteria, mass suggestion, and cultural reinforcement. In communities where belief in the supernatural is deeply ingrained, reports of Luz Mala may spread rapidly through word of mouth, social media, or traditional folklore, leading to a heightened sense of fear and anticipation. The power of suggestion can influence individual experiences and shape the collective perception of reality, blurring the line between myth and empirical observation. Contemporary Perspectives and Cultural Impact, legacy, and continued belief. Despite advances in science and technology, belief in Luz Mala persists in many parts of Latin America, demonstrating the enduring power of folklore and superstition. While some view the legend as antiquated or irrational, others see it as a vital aspect of cultural identity and heritage, preserving traditions that have been passed down through generations. In an age of globalization and cultural homogenization, Luz Mala serves as a reminder of the diversity and richness of Latin American folklore. 
popular culture and media representation. The legend of Luz Mala has permeated popular culture, inspiring numerous works of literature, art, film, and music that explore its themes of mystery, fear, and the supernatural. From classic tales of ghostly apparitions to contemporary horror films set in remote villages, Luz Mala continues to captivate audiences and fuel the imagination of storytellers. Its iconic imagery and evocative symbolism have become synonymous with the allure of the unknown and the enigma of the afterlife. Tourism and Cultural Tourism In recent years, there has been a growing interest in cultural tourism centered around folklore, mythology, and the paranormal. Sites associated with Luz Mala, such as haunted graveyards, ancient ruins, or purportedly haunted locations, have become popular destinations for travelers seeking to experience the supernatural firsthand. While some view this trend as a commercialization of sacred traditions, others see it as an opportunity to promote cultural heritage and generate economic development in rural communities. In the lofty peaks of the Andean Mountains, amidst the swirling mists and ancient glaciers, there exists a creature of legend, feared and revered by those who dwell in the highlands. Ekalika, with its fearsome visage and majestic wings, is a mythical being that embodies the awe and respect that indigenous peoples hold for the natural world. Origins and Evolution of Ekalika the origins of Ekalika can be traced back to the rich tapestry of Bolivian folklore, where stories of mythical creatures and guardians of the mountains have been passed down through generations. While the exact origins of Ekalika are shrouded in mystery, Scholars believe that this mythical being emerged from a combination of indigenous beliefs, Andean cosmology, and cultural influences from pre-Columbian civilizations such as the Tawanaku and Inca. Ekalika's appearance, with the body of a lion and the head of an eagle, reflects the reverence that indigenous peoples hold for both terrestrial and celestial forces. The lion, symbolizing strength and courage, is often associated with earthly realms in the physical world, while the eagle, with its keen eyesight and soaring flight, represents the heavens in the realm of the gods. By embodying both terrestrial and celestial qualities, Akalika serves as a bridge between the earthly and divine realms, connecting the high mountains with the cosmic forces that govern the universe. Characteristics of Akalika Akalika is described in Bolivian folklore as a fearsome creature, with the body of a lion covered in thick fur and powerful muscles, and the head of an eagle adorned with sharp beak and piercing eyes. Its wings, spanning wide and majestic, enable Akalika to soar through the mountainous terrain with grace and agility, surveying its domain with a watchful gaze. Despite its formidable appearance, Akalika is believed to possess a noble and dignified demeanor, embodying the virtues of bravery, wisdom, and guardianship. In addition to its physical attributes, Akalika is often depicted as a protector of hidden treasures and sacred sites that are scattered throughout the Andean Mountains. According to legend, Akalika watches over these sacred places, guarding them from those who seek to exploit or desecrate them. In this role, Akalika embodies the principle of reciprocity and balance that is central to Andean cosmology, ensuring harmony and equilibrium between humans and the natural world. Cultural Significance of Akalika Akalika holds a significant place in Bolivian culture and folklore, serving as a symbol of the deep connection that indigenous peoples have with the land and its spiritual guardians. In Andean cosmology, the mountains are revered as living beings, inhabited by powerful spirits and deities that shape the destiny of the world. Akalika, as the guardian of the Andean mountains, embodies the spirit of these sacred landscapes, protecting them from harm and preserving their natural beauty for future generations. Moreover, Akalika represents the enduring resilience and strength of indigenous communities in the face of colonization exploitation, and environmental degradation. Despite centuries of oppression and marginalization, indigenous peoples have maintained their cultural traditions, spiritual beliefs, and intimate relationship with the land. 
A calico, with its majestic presence and watchful gaze, stands as a testament to the resilience and perseverance of indigenous cultures in the Andean region. Interpretations and Symbolism of A calico The symbolism of A calico extends beyond its role as a mythical guardian of the Andean mountains, encompassing broader themes of environmental conservation, cultural identity, and spiritual interconnectedness. As a symbol of the natural world, a calico reminds us of the importance of preserving and protecting the Earth's ecosystems, recognizing the intrinsic value of biodiversity and the interconnectedness of all living beings. Furthermore, a calico serves as a powerful symbol of indigenous resistance and cultural resurgence in the face of ongoing challenges and threats to indigenous lands and territories. By reclaiming and revitalizing traditional knowledge, spiritual practices, and cultural traditions, indigenous peoples in Bolivia and throughout the Andean region are asserting their rights to self-determination, sovereignty, and environmental stewardship. Contemporary Relevance and Revival of A Calica In recent years, there has been a renewed interest in A Calica and other mythical beings from Bolivian folklore as indigenous communities seek to reclaim and revitalize their cultural heritage in the face of globalization and modernization. Through storytelling, art, music, and other forms of cultural expression, indigenous peoples are preserving and celebrating their ancestral traditions, including the myths and legends that have sustained their communities for generations. Furthermore, a Calica and other mythical beings from Bolivian folklore are gaining recognition and appreciation on the global stage, as people around the world embrace indigenous wisdom, spirituality, and environmental ethics. Through cross-cultural exchange and collaboration, indigenous peoples are sharing their traditional knowledge and cultural practices with a wider audience, fostering greater understanding, respect, and solidarity among diverse communities. Thank you for watching this video up to the end. Like, comment, and subscribe. More videos are coming. See you soon.